The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 2nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject, any please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We're going to begin our morning with a mixed bag out there. you got the Dow that's up 23. S&P is off a half a point. NASDAQ's up 42. Russell's up less than one point. Uh, semis are up 99 points. The trannies are off 73. You've got gold trade down 26 bucks. That's 1%. Silver's up four pennies. Trade down to 31.78. Lights recruit up 86 cents at 70.70. You got natural gas off a penny at 2.881. And the 30 treasuries down one point. Print out at 123.30. Now our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is 20 says uh, Lamb Research up 27.61, three and a half percent. KLA Corp up 23 bucks, three percent. Asmill Holdings 11 bucks, one percent. Icon PLC, 9 bucks 3%. And RPM International is up 8.5. That's a 7% move to the upside. Our shaker is to the downside. Well, that's Mercado Libre up 99 bucks, 5%. Humana is down 47 bucks, 17%. Uh, Tesla, 11 bucks, 4%. Elevance Health down 11 bucks, 2%. McKesson Corp down about 2%. That was a $10 move to the downside. So let's start off our day. Take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. The advanced decline oscillator is it peaking itself above zero? Or below zero. It is still below zero. We closed below zero yesterday. We are below zero right now. This is suggesting that sellers are the ones that have the edge. Now, we'll just take a look at the very bottom panel. That's got the spot VIX index in relationship to its 50-day. The 50-day is currently printing out at 1720. The spot VIX is trading at 1880. As long as price remains above that, sellers will have the edge. So if sellers have the edge here, Steve. How come they don't seem so edgy out there? I don't have the answer to that, but what I can share with you is we do have buyers that are sitting at the bottom of the profile levels, and we have profiles for the ES price just consolidating with inside it. The bottom is 57.52. That's level to watch to the downside. To the upside, it's 58.10. Whichever way breaks is probably going to give us the uh, direction of price here, maybe for a couple of weeks. That's a possibility. But right now, just watch 57.52 on the ES. And the NQ, the bottom of its profile, is down at 19.907. In the case of the Dow, it's never made it down there. Uh, oh, really, it's, it has not made it all the way down to the bottom of that profile at 42.148. Uh, it closed above 42.656, would negate its TD9 count top. 
uh, and a close above 42.590 would uh, be a close above profile resistance out there. In the case of the Russell, also testing support, and that's down at 22.1275. Your resistance area is up at 22.86. So we do have going on here. We know that buyers exist at the bottom of a profile, even though we've got the spot mix index a trade above the 50-day, even though the New York Stock Exchange advanced line oscillator is now below its zero threshold level, you know, sellers should have the ability to push price down. The however is, and if we take a look at however, you know, we are basically in the favorable seasonal time period for the markets out here. Here is the S&P 500. Uh, the red vertical line is today. You know, that bottom basically starts around the end of September out there. We get a bit of a rally into the third week of October, one week to the downside, the end of October. And then now this is the typical pattern. And then the S&P 500 continues to move higher. Why don't we take a look at uh, see if the Dow's pattern is any different? I doubt that it is, but who knows? Let's take a look at it. Let's go back as far as we can. That would be 127 years worth of data. So that shows basically the exact same pattern out here. So we're in the favorable, the beginning of the favorable seasonal time period out there. But we still want to go ahead and trade the patterns that are inside the marketplace right now with regard to patterns back to those daily time frames for the equity future contracts they've got a bust they've got a close below profile support in order to change this uh, bullish mode that we are in inside these equity markets out there uh what do we want to go take a look at next i tell you let's do the uh let's go do a little bit intraday charting here let's start with the nq the nq i believe is the uh well, the SOX, I think, is the strongest indice. Let's just take a look at the NQ right now. And we take a look at the NQ, you can see the daily time frame. So the daily time frame, the oscillator and change line is what it is testing right now. So this basically is up towards a key level of resistance. Uh, that level of resistance right now is up at the 20056 area. If price closes above that, we like to get up to 2177, maybe even 2357. Now, that's a daily time frame chart. If we look to the intraday periods out here, what do we see? You know, we're below, well, we got a new profile that formed in the five hour time frame chart. 19,869 is a, a level of support there. Four hour chart not provided us with a ton of information other than it does show us where resistance is at. And if you look at that oscillator and change line, really acted as a great guide of resistance. So right now that's a 20,070. Yeah, that will go up by a dollar or two if we do get a bit of a rally here. Watch that level. If price closes above it, the four-hour chart, what we can learn from it, no bottoming signal or pattern. No, I take that back. Because the A to B equals CD pattern is in effect out here, uh, you're likely going to get a bullish engulfing candle as we speak uh, this uh, session. And, well, I take that back. It's not till 2 p.m. But nonetheless, the most important aspect of this chart here is going to be the 20067, 200689 level. A close above that, we would see a rally to 2147, anywhere between 2147 and 2230. 2230 being the real key level because that's where counter trend rallies would end. Now, right now, the counter trend rally could also end right at that oscillator and change line. That's the four hour chart. What else do we have out here? On a 30 minute time frame, we've got a road momentum indicator signal, price dealing with resistance up at 20,047. It closed above that on a 30 minute basis. Well, that would be a bullish signal, and that would bring those oscillator and change lines into effect for the 240 and the five hour time frame chart out there. Uh, in the case of the uh, two hour chart, uh, we are trading above uh, profile as we speak right now. So that is a uh, bullish signal. So we'll be back uh, from this. So we're going to go to a break here momentarily. We come back. We're going to go take a look at PAGS for Brent in Martinez, California. He's looking for a bottom pattern there. We're going to go see if we can help him with that. And Tom G, who began, I believe, began a position inside the GDXU today. We're going to take a look at that. So what's inside the GDXU is what I would say. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to start off, take a look at ticker symbol P-A-G-S. This is for Brent de Martinez, California. Brent, my apology for overlooking uh, your request yesterday, but you're looking for a bottom, and that bottom pattern is not in just yet. Now, if you were to get a bullish reversal candle today, you would generate a rose momentum indicator bottom. Now, the other cool thing about the daily time frame chart, now, let's say you don't get a bullish reversal candle today. What's the next signal we'd be looking for? It would be um, it would be a uh, spike below yesterday's low that would take place either tomorrow or on Friday. Yesterday's low was 831. If that were to unfold, you would then get a daily TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, an issue has arisen this morning with regard to uh, Pagasuro Digital Limited out there, and that is that it has formed a new daily profile above price. That tells us about overhead supply. That is resistance. That is, generally speaking, a bearish message out there. Doesn't mean that price can't get back inside that profile. In order to do that, the bottom, which is at 874, is what that would take. And if you were to get that, then you could see a rally up towards 906, maybe even 927. I don't see that in the cards at this moment in time. I would really not see that in the cards if price got below that red oscillator and change line. But over the next couple of days, not today, it doesn't look like, could be, uh, but certainly over the next couple of days, you could get a TD nine count bottom pattern. I think with the uh, overhead resistance of that new profile, Brent, that more likely than not, uh, price wants to go target the 781 level. You had identified that as something I had identified. Uh, that is the weekly TD nine count breakout area. We are in bar number seven of a TD nine count pattern. There's no A to B equals CD pattern on the weekly time frame chart. We're below profile. We're below its oscillator and change line. That suggests a move back there. Now, we're not going to get back there unless price starts trading below the monthly uh, bottom of its profile, which at 842. So right now, we're trading at 849. 
We got down to as low today. We got down, well, yesterday we got down to the low of 831 out there. Um, so we know that, that pro the next area of support on a monthly time frame would be 760. Now, I think you had maybe even some, well, yeah, so I don't have anything going back any further than that. So you've got this uh, bullish engulfing candle in November of 2023. Um, that low out there is also another possible target, 693. So it just looks to me like the daily message is signaling to an eye that this wants lower price. Now, if you get a TD9 count bottom pattern by Friday out there, well, then you should at least get some type of rally, but it may only be to 874. I don't know. The weekly and the monthly chart are just suggesting patience, which I know is what you've got out there. And uh, for for at this moment in time, yeah, the 693, 781 area, I think that's the target buy level. Now, just as a, out of curiosity, uh, that swing point from November 2023 did volume of uh, 94 million shares. And last month we came down, we came down with, uh, ooh, 124 million shares. So we're pushing into that swing point with volume, but still you've got that profile level. And so it's not clear, 842. If we were to close below 842, get below 842, then I think that 693 area, which is what you're looking at, likely becomes uh, comes to fruition out there. So thanks for waiting next day. Hope that gave the information you were looking for and have a wonderful Wednesday. Tom G wrote in earlier this morning, wanted to take a look at the uh, GDXU. And so I asked the question, I posed the question to you in the den, um, what is the GDXU? So always important to understand what's inside the uh, profile, uh, uh, the profile inside the instrument that you're trading. That wasn't it. But here, if we do take a look, just simply go to Yahoo. I went to Yahoo Finance in this instance, or that's where it took me to. And if we take a look at the holdings, it just has two holdings. So it, uh, most of it, 77% of it is the GDX. And the other uh, 24, 23 percent is simply the uh, GDXJ, the junior miners out there. So those are the holdings with inside this instrument. What is GDXU doing? You're just looking for some information. Well, right now, GDXU is trading below the bottom of a bullish structured daily profile. It actually closed below that a couple of days ago. Looked like that was going to be a signal of a... Uh, change in profile change in trend yesterday said well maybe that was a false breakdown and signal out there so the first level here for you to watch at day end uh, tom is going to be that profile level of 4780 now the swing point from two days ago uh I did volume on september 30th of 900,000 shares so far we are in about two hours of trading 640,000 shares is going into 900,000 shares holy shnikes out there so you're looking for a long you really need the buyers in this buy zone from that daily profile to really kick in here and what you really need to see is a close above that green oscillator and change line 49.53 so i think you might be better off waiting to see if you get a close above that daily oscillator and change line to start trading above 49.53 before you take a trade at this stage here this could be signaling and if we do get a close below profile support Again, 47.80. Price should then go target that swing low from September 30th. That swing low, 45.20. And if you close below that, this would then trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That is the message of the daily time frame chart. Let's go see what the weekly chart tells us. The weekly chart says, hey, folks, don't listen to anything Stevie just said during that last 45 seconds. Why is that saying that to us? Well, because we are trading above its green oscillator and change line. That uh, is a key level. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. We're trading above the top of its profile, 4383. Those are bullish signals out there. Now, I see an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, upside. Let's go ahead. Uh, shoot. I forgot that thing's not working on my keyboard. Stevie's got to figure that out. Just need some time. So here's our A to B method. Now, somebody might say, why did you choose... The swing point from July 19th versus the swing point from May 24th. And that's a really great question. And the reason that I chose this one, the July 19th, is because if I had selected the swing point here from May 24th, we've got to go to the low slow that takes place after that. Well, first what shows up is June 21st. However, there was a lower low that came in on August 9th. 
Well, if that's the low that we're using, then we have to use the highest high before that. And that's why you'd shift over to the uh, swing point here from July 19th. So a little nuance, but a real important nuance out there. And so now let's go ahead and copy and paste. CV is a CPA. Cut, cop, copy, paste, and assemble. I'm really good at that. Um, but that's about the only thing that I'm good at. Now, if we take a look at this A to B equals CD price projection, GDXU, you've got 64 buckaroonies out there. Um, the swing point that it would need to take out from a weekly basis is that July 19th, more than 4.7 million shares. We don't have that just yet. Last week, we were into that swing point with 5 million shares, 4.5 basically, 4.7. So you're pushing that swing point. So the weekly chart says it, it, it's got a confirmed, well, it doesn't have confirmed. It does not have an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside, but it is it may go on to form, in fact, just that. The monthly chart for GDXU, trading about profile resistance out there at 40.59. So that looks pretty good. It's a daily chart you've got to contend with out here. And we really need to see how things play out because you are pushing lower with volume. Watch that 49.56 area. Now, real quickly here on an intraday basis, on a 30-minute chart, what do we see? We see a roadsman to indicator bottom pattern. Price is now below. This is a 30-minute chart. Price is below its oscillator and change line, the bottom of its profile. That says, Tom, you're, if you're long, watch this 48.15 level. You certainly want to see price get back above that area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at Yang for Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den, SBSW for Dan, OKLU for Dude, and U.S. Dollar for No Spin. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, 
you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to take a look. So two questions came in from uh, Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den. The first one was, can I identify identify uh, the chart patterns associated with the, I believe this is what you were saying, uh, Jambalaya, the, uh, the, the trading pattern. I believe this is correct. I may have it in reverse order. But I believe that the pattern is to sell on Rosh Hashanah. By the way, Happy New Year to all of our uh, Jewish friends out there. I believe that starts this evening out there so this would be the so-called day you would sell and then buy on uh, Yom Kippur out there which is 10 days from now on October 12th so the cool thing that I do have with my uh, the season X uh, chart patterns out here the seasonal it does have as a holiday Yom Kippur so uh, what I did was I put 15 days before and 15 days after so this would, in essence, be the uh, Yom Kippur uh, date right here, that red vertical line. So we're taking, like, so even though I went ahead 15 days before, uh, it's really a 10-day, uh, maybe I just put it, I'm just going to leave it at 10 days. If you look at number 10 out here is where my cursor is at. So here's over 127-year period, that belief out there. Um, and uh, you can see that the market certainly does move down uh, during that time period. Now we can change it from, but it also, you know, the whole idea of buy, on um, uh, sell on Rosh Hashanah, buy on Yom Kippur over 127 year period. I don't see where that buy really fits in. So maybe it's not, maybe 127 years is just simply too much time. Let's look at 25 years. If we look at 25 years out here, here's day number 10. We can see that, yeah, the market precipitates over the last 25 years, precipitates to the uh, downward side. And then you basically do have that buy signal. So over a 25-year period, that pattern most certainly has worked. How about the last 15? Uh, what do we see out there? Uh, so, so, so out here, 10-day versus uh, when you get to Yom Kippur. Not a substantial difference in price movement out there. Maybe the last 10 years, what does that pattern look like? There's that pattern. So I am able to provide that data for you. So there you go. I hope that helps you out with regard to that specific question. Now let's go take a look at Yang, which was the second question that came in. Yang is a ETF for China. I'm going to guess that this is the, this is the, uh, well, no, 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 let me guess. Let me just find out exactly what it is that we're taking a look at. So that way I don't screw up. Yang ETF, hold on. ETF. And that is the, the FTSE China Bear 3X out there. So, um, I would put up my China charts, but uh, so I, I could just, with regard to this ETF, I don't see any kind of a bottom pattern. If we were to take a look at the actual index out there, or one of the China indices out here, which would be the Shanghai, we'd see the exact same thing, no top in place. It has had just a ginormous move to the upside, in this case here for Yang, a ginormous move to the downside. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, it just created last week a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, gigantic. We can more easily probably draw that in on the monthly chart out here. So why don't we do, the, uh, well, be careful what you say, Stevie. Um, Okay, for whatever reason, that's not working. Now, with regard to where are we at on the monthly time frame, we're in bar number eight on the monthly time frame. This says that this could form some type of bottom between this month and the next two out there. Oh, great. Thanks, Stevie. So that means between now and the end of the year. That, that, that's exactly what it means. I mean, I don't know how else to interpret it. Let me take a look at this weekly chart again. And so on this weekly chart out here, yeah, it is a just a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, if you're really going to do this, which Stevie is really going to do this. We're going to go to the high that's all the way back here in March, March 18th. That's going to be our A point. Our B point down here is the uh, low from uh, January 27th. We're going to copy and paste as a weekly time frame chart that we're using. I guess I should have given you the year. That was in 2023, the January. And here for March, that was in 2022. So if we cut 
copy and paste uh, this line. Um, it's 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 extraordinary, I think, where this might take us to. Well, it t it's going to take us out of business with this triple ETF. That's what that would do. Uh, so I, actually, I don't even know why I did what I did there. I just wasn't thinking. Of course, you've seen me just not thinking a couple of times before out here. All right, so Yang, uh, at this stage here, the best that I've got for you is it's headed lower, headed lower to where? Right now, I'd have to say a buck seventy four. That's the monthly oscillator and change line. So Jambal, I hope that that gave you the information you were looking for. May not have on, on Yang out there, but I've done the best that I possibly can. Sometimes that's not good enough. Let's go take a look at the SBSW. That's for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And if we take a look at this, what do we see? We see a wave seven bottom that formed out here and confirmed on a daily time frame on September 11th. Since then, we had it rallied right up into breakdown resistance, a nice move from $3.10 or so up to 449 Now, on the trading day of September 26 out there, that is the B point of an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That B point had volume of 6.7 million shares. Today, so far, you are at 3.8 million shares, a little over two hours of trading. This has got the volume to take out that swing point. So that's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. What is that going to look like? Well, let's go ahead and draw that in. So the A point is the uh, low, as I mentioned, from the trading session of September the uh, 10th out there. The B point, as we talked about, was September 26th. Cut, copy, paste, and, symbol, and assemble out here. Copy, paste. Now let's do the assemble piece of it. Here's the assemble piece of it. And, Dan, you've got a confirmed. You will have a day Z, a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Should take you to about 555 or so. That's the daily signal. What's the weekly chart telling us? The weekly chart is telling us price is trading into a sell zone. So the daily is saying, I want to definitely move higher, but there's turbulence between 468 and 489. The monthly chart shows you've got turbulence that begins at uh, 459. We're trading at 459 right now. So you'd love to see this close above 489. That would be another uh, big bullish outcome. That would then add to that idea of that A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. It's confirmed. It's in place out here. But the question becomes, what other resistance are we dealing with? And that's pretty simple. 468 to 489 out there. You close above 489, and then it's off to that $5 and change level uh, for SBSW. So hope that provided with the information you were looking for, and you are most welcome. Dude inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at OKLO, the OK Corral. So OK OKLO, nice uh, bar today. It's running into weekly persistence. Persistence. Running into weekly resistance. Thank you, Stevie. What's that resistance level? Well, dude, that is the top of its weekly profile. And that number right now is at the 957 area. 957 is what you're looking for. Now, this is also taking out a swing point. Is it doing it with volume? That swing point was back on September 24th. Volume there, 7 million shares. So far today, 3.8 million shares. The answer is yes, it is. That would set up an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. But that's not going to come to fruition, dude, until you see a close a weekly close that is above the top of his profile and again that is at the 957 level that's what i would be watching and there's no reason for it to not take that out except that there's a lot of sellers there steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. 
Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Our next question comes from No Span inside the Tiger's Den. And you just simply like to take a look at the U.S. dollar index, get a, a feel for what the charts are communicating to each of us. So let's start with the daily time frame out here. And then this daily time frame chart, you're going to notice a couple levels of resistance. First, you're going to see descending trend line resistance. You're going to see two areas out here. Price got through the first one yesterday, and it has taken on the second one as we speak today. Now, I've even got a trend line that comes off of the high out here from September 3rd, then the next high at September 12th. You can see we've run right into that. And just above that is the bottom of its daily profile, 101.57. So we have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom patterned out here. That formed on September 30th. We got the bottom, and now what price is doing, spin, no spin, is taking on resistance, trend line and or profile resistance. So what the U.S. dollar needs to do for a daily time frame is get above 101.57. Two closes above that is going to suggest a move to 10202. Now, 10202 happens to be the center of its bullish structured daily profile. We've been below that profile ever since it formed, very similar to something that Brent and I were looking to, although it was one day, a PAGS, I believe it was, where a profile had formed above price. This is just the opposite. Um, so first, the U.S. dollar index has got a daily bottom. It wants to move higher, but can it get through this resistance zone? And I don't know the answer to that, uh, nor does really anybody out there. But we're going to try to see if we can uh, look for some signals that would help us out. Now, that's on the daily chart. If you look at the weekly, that's your, your right-hand side. You can see we're inside a uh, inside its profile. Its resistance level up there is at the 101.70 area. If price can go close above that, we get up to the 104 level. We're inside the uh, monthly uh, profile support zone or buy zone between 100.11 and 101.79. Um, uh, so that's what we've got there. So let's do this here, no spin. Let's go move over to Stevie's white background charts. And instead of looking at the U.S. dollar index, let's look, let's look at the components that make up 83% of the U.S. dollar index, the euro, the yen, and the pound. The most important chart out here at this moment in time is the weekly chart. And let's open this up. Why is the weekly chart the most important, Stevie? Excellent question. Let me answer that. And that is what we see out here is a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top went and formed uh, the week of August 30th. That high has not been taken out. It's been tested, but it has not been taken out. Now, as we speak, it's only Wednesday at 1144. But what we can see is price is trading below at this moment in time, that green oscillator and change line. We have not seen price below that since June 28th. 
of 2024 out there. So we've been up above this level for a couple of months. That is a key area of support come Friday. If price closes below that no spin, the euro is likely to head lower. Its price target would be down at 1.07. If that's going to happen, because of its 50, about 58% weighting inside the U.S. dollar out there, that's going to go ahead and put strength into that U.S. dollar index. So part of what's needed in order for the U.S. dollar to take out those descending trend lines or get back inside its profile is going to be that oscillating change on, on the weekly time frame. Granted, we have uh, seen um, three lower, four lower closes out here. Today would be the fourth lower close. So uh, no reason why you couldn't get some type of a, uh, a bit of a bounce out there, you know, four days to the downside. So you want to watch that too. But at week's end, it's really going to be that oscillator and change line. Uh, for with regard to the Jap, so that says that the dollar would get stronger if that comes to fruition. The U.S. dollar Japanese yen right now is taking on its breakdown resistance area at 145.55. It tried this four days ago, uh, three days ago. It failed to take that out. If it does take that out, that would be a positive. On a weekly basis, you've got a TD9 count bottom. That suggests a run to at least 147.33 out there. That's its oscillator and change line. If price closes above that, then we could be targeting 158.86. If the yen rises, here that's telling us it's getting weaker. That would add strength to the U.S. dollar index. So two, the two top weighted currency pairs, uh, 58 and 13, um, are suggesting we could see that U.S. dollar index really break through that resistance level. Finally, when we get to the Great British Pound, that's moving lower. TD9 count top. On a weekly time frame, this is likely targeting, or daily time frame, this is likely targeting 131. That happens to be the weekly oscillator unchange line. So no spin. That was no spin. That's what's going on when we take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Hope that helps you out. Our next request is to take a look at NVIDIA. And that's coming in from Nicholas. So I'm just going to close out these uh, currency charts out here for me, make it a bit easier. And uh, we're going to go take a look at NVIDIA and then the SMHs for uh, for Nick. So let's see here. Where did that go? There we go. NVIDIA. So we take a look at NVIDIA, and I know that you took a, a long call trade uh, this morning. What NVIDIA is doing, it is trading with inside its profile. Support, 114.67. Uh, if you took that trade near the open, price had gotten down, or not, not near the open, maybe shortly after the open, price had got down to the 115 area. So that would be a beautiful thing. But right now what price is doing, that's uncertain here to Stevie whether or not price can take out resistance. Resistance being that green oscillator and change line. That is at 119.09. The high of the day, 119.29 out there. If price can close above that, then your next resistance point is going to be 120.45. And I would assume that that's what you're really looking for is for price to get above that level in order for that trade to really work out. But as is right now on a daily time frame, you've got support at 114.67, resistance where we're trading right now at the 119 level, and additional resistance at 120.45. On a weekly time frame, we have prices trading with inside its profile, pretty evenly balanced profile. So not it, all that I can share with you is there's resistance at 126.80. TD9 count top on the monthly chart. It did its work to the downside by finding support at that oscillator and change line. Uh, it does suggest to you and I that it's also trading with inside its profile. It may be targeting 140.76. So for your specific trade, since we've got consolidations with inside the daily, weekly, and monthly profile levels out there, you got to watch that 114.67 and 120.45 area. You also took a position in the SMHs. So let's go see what those charts are communicating to you and I. And here for the daily time frame, I've really got the same message. Slightly different. But the same message, the same message being a consolidation with insider profiles for the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. In the case of the daily time frame, it's a bullish structured profile. Price is uh, found support at the buy zone this morning, 235.83 to 238.85. So nice entry point for you there, uh, Nicholas. And now price looks like it wants to run into resistance, the top of the profile, 245.91. You've got at 252.29, the weekly oscillator and change line. That is a resistance point. If price can get above that, you have a sell zone between 258.30 and 274.81. A monthly chart, it's TD9 count, Roadsman to Indicator Bottom, has really done its work to the downside by holding that green oscillator and change line. So, uh, uh, 
this ought to get to 245.91. Whether it can get above that level or not, I don't know. So, Nicholas, I hope that helped you all both with the NVIDIA and the SMHs out there. And as always, thanks much for your request. And thank you for sending that photo. And glad that you made it back uh, safely from your travels over in Europe. So what are we going to close out the show with? I don't know, but let's uh, we'll do this here. We'll go take a look at perhaps the ES Mini. We took a look at the NQ. So what do we have inside this ES Mini out here? If you look at those intraday charts, roads meant to indicator bottom for the 15, for the 30, and for the 60-minute time frame chart out there. Uh, those are each trading above profile resistance and their oscillator and change line. A further rally is warranted. Now that further rally, it's 11.50. Come 12 noon, you're going to be bar number eight on a 15-minute basis. So on a very short-term time frame, you should get a TD9 count top by 12.30 this afternoon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. And I pulled up the charts for the Dow Equity Future contract while we were in breakout here. And uh, interesting, this 30-minute time frame chart has a, a TD knack on top. Let me just open up the uh, panel here. You'll see that uh, that pattern went ahead and completed at uh, 11, uh, I'm sorry, at, uh, at 11.30. So now what you're going to want to watch here, prices trade above profile resistance, above its oscillator and change line. What should unfold is price should pull back to test that green line, currently 42.444. But if on any 30-minute time frame, first one being 12 noon, price were to close above that TD9 count high of 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572, 42.572
42,572. If price close above that, we more likely than not get up towards the high of 42,656. Above that, we get up to the high of uh, 42,673. So those are the numbers to watch there. So you've already got a confirmed TD9 count top for the Dow Equity Future contract out there. Watch that number. It should provide you with some information as to what its intent is. Lastly, I think we close out the show by taking a look at natural gas out here. We take a look at natural gas. What we know is that today is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom. I'm sorry, TD9 count top. I was looking at the TD9 count bottom. So I was looking at one thing, thinking something else. Boy, that is screwed up. In any event, you got a Roachman Dominicator bottom and a TD9 count bottom. Now you're going to get a TD9 count topping pattern today. Now, what should unfold here is price should simply pull back to support. The first level of support, as long as price closes above 2895 today, would be 2.895, the top of its profile. The second level of support would be down around the 277 level. That would be its oscillator and change line. On a weekly time frame, we can see that natural gas is running into resistance, the top of its profile out there and then finally the next resistance on any kind of rally even if this td9 count were to get negated out here on a daily the daily time frame would be three dollars and eight cents that would be the bottom of that uh, monthly profile out there so we got a few seconds left out here uh what do we got apple a, -A p l what's this thing doing here well we've got like about two seconds but let me just see what we can find here so apple pulled back this morning and it uh, tested rejected the top of its uh, weekly pro daily profile, 224.92. Its daily resistance right now does stand at about 227.73. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on Wonderful Wednesday. I hope you do have a wonderful Wednesday. More important, Happy New Year to all of our Jewish friends. And I'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp on a terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.